Welcome to Pentair Commercial Valve, the valve for every application. This is going to be an overview of all the commercial valves we have available within the Pentair portfolio that um, are all uh, uh, constructed of uh, low lead brass. So essentially these are our flex control valves. And there is a service demand profile order to these valves. We're going to start out with a 2750. This is a one inch inlet and outlet. You have a 25 gallon per minute backwash and a 25 gallon per minute flow rate. And that's going to increase up to the 2850, which steps up to 50 gallons per minute with 1.5 inch inlets and outlets and a 49 GPM backwash. These filters can handle those heavier medias like Corsex and Firm, but these are single piston valves. We'll get into that in just a moment. And then we're going to migrate up to the big brother in the single valve platform. This is a two inch inlet and outlet 3150 valve. This is up to 100 GPM and 100 GPM backwash giving this valve the ability to function easily as a softener, but quite well in those heavier media filtration applications as well with high flow rates. So there's a valve for every flow. These are designed for single uh, applications, like a single filter or a single softener or a single filter before a single softener in those sorts of applications. And they are single piston valves, which means they have one piston that diverts the flow to the different cycles within each valve. Essentially, same, similar technology, just scaled in different sizes to match flow rate and plumbing. That's where the water comes into the inlet, down into each valve. Exact same flow path in both. And here's where you have uh, the uh, backwash portion of the valve and then the outlet portion of the valve. And it's blocked off. And this slides back and forth, diverting the flow through different channels, directing the flow in different directions through the valve in order to A, backwash the filter, generate a brine draw, and then, you know, rinse the filter or softener and then fill that brine tank in the final cycle of the system. Now, here we have our single piston valves. So what happens when you have a situation where flow progresses or you need to have consistent soft water without missing this step in a process water or a large facility. That's where the versatile 2900 and 3900 come in. You have the two inch 2900 valve, has 35 gallon per minute uh, backwash, but handles that 100 GPM flow rate, but it's able to network with other valves and work in tandem, work in what's called progressive flow, um, and um, basically in twin alternating, lots of complexity for any sort of application can be had here. And the 3900 steps up to 300 gallons per minute with 100 GPM backwash. And both of these valves can handle a great complexity of issues. And they're really geared at water softening and the lighter filtration when you get into dealing with Corsex and Berm, you're going to have to really modify that practice a little bit in order to extract you know, those applications from these valves. But these are geared for the bulk of applications of softening and filtration uh, that's on the market. We want to be careful when we size commercial products. This is where the details become critical. You know, we can pair these systems, and but we have to make sure we pair them 
where we are getting the flow rates through them and the plumbing downstream uh, in the proper ranges. Because if we push too much water through a smaller piece of plumbing or through a piece of plumbing, anything over eight uh, feet per second, we can cause what's known as cavitation or vibration within the plumbing. And essentially, we will erode that plumbing over time. So we want to make sure that when we're sizing these systems, we want to match those flow rates to the plumbing as well, and that we're able to you know, stay under those flow capacities. So if we're going to put multiple three-inch valves on six-inch plumbing, we're going to need to make sure we have three 3900s at 100, you know, at, at 300 GPM on that system so that we exceed this flow path so we can make sure we have that proper flow through that plumbing. Infrastructure is critical when we're, when we're thinking about commercial softening and filtration products. We want to make sure we're taking care of that plumbing because large plumbing is a serious investment in those um, applications. Now, a dual piston valve, what's going on here? Why two pistons? Essentially, what this lower piston does for us is it acts as a standby. It turns this valve flow through it on and off. Here's the, the inlet on both of the valves, similar design. This is a three-inch inlet. This is a two-inch inlet. And all this lower piston says is yes or no to flow. Yes, I want flow to go through me. Through me. No, I don't. Now, that allows us to create a lot of complex flow patterns with multiple tanks. And that's where controllers come in and learning how to exploit those factors into these applications. But the second piston, which is up top on both of these valves, all it does is control the regeneration process. And that slows down flow a little bit. That's where you see the drop off in flow rates from service of 100 GPM down to 35 GPM on the backwash. So we need to make sure we're sizing these valves for the backwash rate of that media as well as the flow rate of the overall application and plumbing size. Both valves work exactly the same. They're just bigger versions of each other. So going back to the 2750 single valve, you have a one inch inlet and outlet. And with water softening, we're always matching the plumbing size. And in um, commercial plumbing, you may be softening the hot and the cold, which means you're, you're matching the plumbing to the inlet cold water line coming into the building. Or we're softening just the hot side of the building where we're matching the plumbing going into the water heaters. So we want to make sure we've got that paired correctly for the proper flow rate, not only through the softener, but through the hot side of the building. So you have a three, you know, a one inch inlet and outlet with a three quarter inch um, drain line for backwash. And you have a 1600 and 1700 uh, brine system that gives you the selection of injectors based on the size of the tank that you're going to pair this with. These selectors are all chosen along with the backwash flow controls for the amount of media you have in the tank, whether that's filtration media or soft media. And this is paired with two and a half inch tanks with an inch and 0.05 OD riser pipe. You need to match those to get the system operating properly. You have 25 gallons per minute at a 25 PSI drop. Water pressure does play a role here in all water management tools. We want to make sure we're, we're delivering the water at a high enough pressure for the equipment downstream to be satisfied as well. So when we're dealing with commercial applications, we want to collect a lot more data than we would with a homeowner's application. And some of these valves do have applications in some of these larger homes that you see in the marketplace these days. Some of those 5,000 plus square foot homes that have, you know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half plumbing, these may fit well into the most high flow high households as well. The 2850, it steps up to an inch and a half plumbing. Uh, we'll be talking later about our new 2815 valve, which is a stainless steel version of this valve. 
Um, it has a one inch uh, drain line, inch and a half inlet outlet, the same 1600 and 1700 brine system as the 2750, but our flow rate is up to 49 GPM. So much more higher flow through this system. And this will fit on a four inch tank. So we're dealing with much larger tanks, more media here. The 3150 is a two inch variety in this class. This is up to 100 GPM. You have a two inch um, backwash drain line on the system. And with all commercial um, softening systems, you have to make sure the drain can handle the flow rate. Otherwise, you'll end up with flooded back rooms and basements and things like that. We want to make sure that drain or that sump pump that we're dumping that water into can handle the flow of this water. Uh, inlet outlet two inches, and this has the 1800 uh, brine system inductors. And this is for solely for four inch tanks, larger amounts of media, single tank applications here. Two inch OD riser, bigger plumbing, bigger flow rates. Now the 2900, you have a one inch drain line, two inch inlets and outlets, 35 GPM at a 25 pressure, uh, PSI pressure uh, drop with the backwash. Uh, this has a, uses the same 1600 and 1700 system uh, as the 2700 or 2750 system. And essentially it's a 2750 brine valve on top of a two inch valve body. This is for four inch tanks and you're going to select this valve for larger plumbing applications where you need a, a large single tank or uh, alternating systems to provide consistent soft water 100% of the time or progressive flow where you will need multiple tanks to match the flow of let's say production lines coming up to speed um, let's say in a bottler one line kicks out in the morning, they bring another shift on it, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, you have more water demand, then another shift comes on, and you have three production lines running all at the same time, having high flow, and the system will react to those, those lines being shut down as the day progresses, allowing you to keep even flow and proper exchanges going on in those tanks. This flow rate is critical to the ion exchange process and also the filtration process that those things happen at specific design flow rates through the tanks. That's where you need to have multiple tanks. You just can't cram more flow through one single tank and expect to get good consistent results. The 3900, just the big brother of the 2900, three inch um, ports, 100 GPM, um, maximum backwash through the system better have a drain that can handle that. You have a two inch drain line on the system and the 1800 brine system, just like the 3150. So this will fit um, four inch tanks, but it also has a threaded flange adapter for much larger bolt on flange bank based tanks. So you can put this on substantial commercial equipment sizing this unit. So when it comes to configuring the valve, you have a controller that essentially any service provider can be comfortable with setting up. The standard electromechanical timers that have been around for decades, uh, for more than more than a half a century now, those, those electromechanical time clocks have been out there, all usable on these systems. We have our SXT, uh, controllers that are available for the 2750 and 2850. You have the XTs that are available on all of these valves. And then the newest control in our family has the same functionality as the NXT2, but with some more features to it um, for this entire valve line. And this is the controller you really want to use when you have multiple tanks or some complex installs uh, as RO pretreatment, or if you have chemical dosing pumps, or brine towers, um, 
you know, if you need uh, ultra pure water where you use polisher tanks or, or cation and anion exchange for deionization, this is the controller you want for those complex applications, allowing the installer to be as versatile with that install as he can be. So have lots of power head options. Um, we have designer or stainless steel covers. They're no longer uh, you'll see, uh, you know, available, but they are out there in the field. They are now going to be coming with this hinged cover with a, uh, a window that allows you to see the controller through it. And this pairs with all our controllers. All our digital controllers are going to be nested now so that you can swap um, them in and out quite conveniently, and they will also interchange if you wanted to upgrade. They just sort of nest into a whole clip. Um, and we also have environmental NEMA 3, 3R equivalent. This is for those outdoor installations uh, to have them rate, rated for rainfall. Uh, you want to be careful um, in extreme weather conditions. You want to pick the, the least exposed side of a building to install water software if you can help it. Um, but at the same time, if you're installing it someplace, make sure you're installing it where the rain isn't going to hit an object and splash up into it. That will create issues. You have us uh, sort of back in time. We have the 332 adjustable time regeneration. Uh, we've adjusted this. A clock so that uh, you can see uh, the regeneration time that is set based on being picked on the unit. So this is a, a, an old um, upgrade, but it is out there so you know the difference between the two. And if you've got a 3000 timer out there still working, we kind of want to see a picture of that guy still working out there um, just to you know, pat ourselves on the back for such a durable product there. You have timer features. They come in 120 volt, 24 volt, and 24, uh, 20 volt AC. And you can tell that by the color code. Um, this switch will operate during an individual cycle. Uh, this is a, a micro switch that allows you to do brine reclaim, separate source backwash, um, you know, turn on and off a pump at specific points during the cycle where it hits a specific set of pins. This auxiliary switch, you have the drive gear that's required for it. Uh, this part number for the micro switch, the pin and the screw that retains it. Very, very simple to mount onto the unit. Lots of flexibility here with the ability to you know, combine this with lots of different applications. Now, how a time clock is programmed, it's based on the pins. And it's not just the pins that set the cycle. Each one of these pins is two minutes. So this is going to backwash for 10 minutes. And then you have end to 70 for the brine draw in rinse of that system. If you need to adjust any one of these cycles, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then it goes from brine rinse, draw in rinse into rapid rinse which rinses the media free of any remaining salt or brine. And then it's going to go into brine fill. This is the section that you're going to uh, replace, you know, change the most and alter settings the most based on how much salt you want to uh, brine the system with. And then you have brine fill, fill shut off, and then it will put you back into service. Let's say I wanted to adjust the backwash. Uh, because I was dealing with very dirty water coming into the building, and I needed to get that dirt load off the resin bed. What I'm going to do here is take a pin from this holder, and if I wanted to add two minutes, I'd add one pin. If I wanted to add four minutes, I'd add two pins. But what I have to do is then leapfrog two pins the remaining um, phases of the program in order to keep them in their proper time frame. So I don't want to subtract four minutes from Brian Draw and Rinse. I want to keep it uniform. So I'm going to put 
my pin here, then I'm going to leapfrog this pin, and then I'm going to leapfrog this pin. If I put two pins in, I'm going to leapfrog, and then leapfrog again, and then leapfrog, and leapfrog again to maintain the same program. So that's a very, very simple way to program. It takes a little more knowledge to do this and understanding of the settings, but if you add a pin, you need to adjust the rest of them in order to maintain the same cycles afterwards. We have auxiliary switches available for the 2750 and 2850. Um, we can retrofit the 27 or 850 with an auxiliary switch with the cam. Um, all NXT control valves have this auxiliary switch that can be used, or NXT2. You have two of them that can be used, normally open, normally closed, yeah, either at uh, rapid rinse or brine fill. On the existing um, time clock versions, you're going to replace the cams inside the motor and replace it with the, this switch as a retrofit option or purchased at the time of install, they can replace them in the field. Those auxiliary switches are designed to you know activate after rapid rinse or after tank fill and this is for turning on and off let's say an RO pump um, or a chemical feed pump or you know a separate source regen where you're pumping in brine from a softened water source now you have different cams to pay it depending on its version uh, of, you know depending on which ones you have you have after tank refill on the 3150 cam and on the NXT2 version um, on the power head itself. And then you have the after rapid rinse cam for the 3150 with its two additional mounting holes. You can see rapid rinse and BF, that's where you're going to mount the screws. Rapid rinse is where you mount the two screws for rapid rinse and BF for brine fill after brine fill. Now we have various pistons. The bypass piston has a solid white plug. Um, that way it does not allow water through. If you notice, we don't have this black cap. This is the no wa hard water bypass piston. And this has a bigger section that does not allow water through uh, during um, regen. So if you have a black cap, it's a no bypass piston. And those tend to be used in um, the 2900, 3900s, where bypass pistons are used in single tape applications where you don't mind hard water for a short period of time, or the system's going to regen at a time when no one is using water and it doesn't really matter. Now, the no hard water bypass pistons on the 2750 and the 2850 require an additional spacer that's located between the back plate and the body of the valve. So if you walk up to one of these valves that has this white spacer in between the back plate and the body of the valve, you know you're dealing with a no hard water bypass piston. If you wish to change that on a valve and add a no hard water bypass piston, you are going to need this back plate. And what this does is properly position that piston so that it functions properly as a no bypass. That's simply it. It keeps that piston from pulling it out too far and it allows it to keep sealing off the fall water. That's really what it's there for. This is that room to move. Now, the 2900 valve body introduces the capability to backwash tanks up to 35 GPM. You have this space here. Uh, we have this additional port in the valve that allows extra flow to be routed, ported through the piston plug. And this gives us more flow than the standard 2750 brine valve system. So remember, 2900 is a 2750 brine valve on top of a two inch body. Well, we've added this port to it that allows more flow during the backwash so we can get that media lifted and backwash power. 
software. So it's an important developing allow us to up to 36 inch softwares, the diameter of tanks that gives us that ability to handle those tanks. So here's what a no hard water bypass piston and a no hard water bypass pistons uh, look like. You have new ports in the piston are necessary to accommodate the increased backwash. This is for the 2900. Um, if you don't have it, this is for uh, involving treated water regeneration and non-ported plug must be used to cut off untreated flow being involved in the backwash. So this is for those high purity applications where you're doing a separate source regen or you're backwashing with treated water as well. So this is um, some subtle variation within the product that allows you to meet those applications. And this is what um, you're going to end up specifying after that discovery period with what that end user wants in their water quality. So feel free to get us involved in these discussions when you come across these applications and we can help you specify the right system. Injector throats and nozzles, getting this size correctly for the unit is critical to matching the proper flow rate of the brine through the resin at critical, you know, the critical regeneration. The 1600 uses two separate nozzles that thread in, and these can get clogged. They need to be cleared. I suggest if you ever have an issue with these, you just replace them. Um, they're a cheap part, and if you're in servicing, it's just a good idea to replace them because um, clearing them out with metal objects can damage this cone and cause water to spin and then you don't get a proper venturi effect and any change in that hampers the regeneration of it. So if they're in there and these are damaged in any way, replace them. If they're clogged anyway, just replace them. It's much simpler that way. Um, the 2750, 2850, and 2900 use the 1700 um, injector series. These are too large. Uh, injectors where the body of the injector actually becomes the venturi for us, creating that draw, uh, much larger for increased flows. Same thing with the 1800 uh, series of injectors for the 3150 and 3900 systems. Now, all of these nozzles and throats are color coded to match the system they belong with and that gives you a selection for every tank and every blind flow that is required based on the incoming water pressure we'll get to that in just a minute so we have a wide range of applications um, for sizing it correctly for um, standard Sodium chloride brine, you can also use potassium chloride in certain situations. If you need to do strong acid regenerations, we do have those um, nozzles that would be appropriate for that as well. So we can match the application and fine tune that valve by just changing out the injector throats and nozzles. Now, why are those nozzles important? They create the proper blend of regenerate flow or total flow, which is a combination of the slow rinse going through the injector and the brine being drawn into that venturi and mixing it. It needs to be mixed in a, in a eight to 10% uh, brine solution. And that is regulated by water pressure. The more water pressure you push through a venturi, the stronger vacuum it creates. And vice versa, the slower the water pressure, the less of a venturi action you create. And those are all designed around 60 PSI. Well, if you drop down below out of the range of that brine draw or generant flow, which will be specified on the specific medias spec sheet for, for resin, and it does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, so please check. If you fall two ranges, if you, you can handle a 20 PSI difference either way. So you can handle 80 PSI down to 40 PSI, but as soon as you drop down to less than 40 PSI, you will impact that regeneration, and you may 
need to go up in injector size to get there. So let's say you, you know you needed um, a red injector at 60 psi for 0.6 GPM flow rate. Well, as soon as I drop down below, you know, below 40, I get in 30 range. I may need to go up to the next size injector to closely match. See how it's within 20 psi; it's slightly greater than the 0.53. I may have to jump down and get this larger injector if I'm going to run at that 30 psi system. Um, and that's how impactful water pressure can be. Or if they're using a ton of water in the plant at the same time and you get a pressure drop, that's why we want these to regenerate at a time when there's not a lot of great water uh, pressure changes in the building so you get consistent regeneration. And this is how you select those right injectors based on the water pressure coming into the building. More details you need to collect when, you know, talking to a commercial client. 1700 injector series, same sort of issue going on here. We're just dealing with larger tanks here that require more regenerate flow. And that's going to be a multiple based on how much media there is in the tank and the size of the tank you have. Same issues. If we drop too far below, we may have to go up. Bigger the, the tanks, the little more wiggle room you have. Same thing with the 1800 injector series, same information applied. If you drop out of range, you may need to go up to the next, the next injector based on water pressure. So all our brine valves and brine line flow controls are stamped or put on a sticker on the brine valve itself so you know which one you are dealing with. And what the brine line flow control limits how much water goes to the brine tank, thus telling you how long it takes to put the proper amount of water in the brine tank. If I have a 1 GPM brine line flow control and I need 6 gallons of water in my brine tank, I'm going to set the brine flow for 6 minutes. But if I have a 0.25 or an eighth of a gallon of per minute flow control or a quarter of a gallon uh, per minute flow control, I'm going to have to increase that number considerably. So instead of six minutes, I'm going to have 24 minutes to put that same water into that brine tank. And it's all limited by this flow washer that's inserted here. In the, in the flow control. Most of these are going to be external, screwed on to the unit, um, but there's also the piston here that helps regulate flow. You have a 3 8 inch external connection on this valve with the 1600 and 1650 brine line flow controls. 1600 is brass, the 1650 is plastic, same component, just in a different material. 1700, 1710, same valve, different material, half inch brine line connection going down to the brine tank. You have a brine line flow control of 1 GPM to 7 GPM, much bigger brine tanks here with this application on this valve. Now we have a whole selection of brass meters, low lead brass meters that are applicable up to water temperatures of 150 degrees. You have a standard count range, an extended count range um, that allows you to sense higher flow rates and higher ranges on larger uh, applications. But one of the things you have to be aware of is how your customer uses water. If you have a process plant, their flows are going to be pretty consistent based on the size of that manufacturing line they're dealing with. But when you step into like, let's say a grocery store where you have a large building with lots of water using pieces of equipment, but it's all used intermittently, we want to look at the lowest flow rate they have possible and select a meter that will pick up that low flow because we don't want water slipping by and not being counted. So understanding your customer will help you determine 
which meter to select. We now have a, a line of stainless steel um, meters to be paired with our 2815 valve to um, match with that as well. So you'll see stainless steel meters available as well. Uh, I would suggest that if you're going to use them with a brass valve, um, that you get a dielectric union so you don't get galvanic action between a stainless steel meter and a brass meter. So that brass valve uh, on an installation. You have accuracy ranges down from three quarters uh, down to a quarter gallon per minute. Uh, one inch meter is seven uh, tenths of a gallon a minute. And all of these meters can be sleeved to reduce it down to the next lower category. So if we need to get pick up low flows in, um, let's say, a, a grocery store um, where you have a coffee kiosk up front with a half gallon per minute uh, coffee brewer that's pulling water or feeding an RO system, you may have to step down to from the inch and a half meter on that software in the back or sleeve it to get it down into this range so you can detect that water. Now we have commercial valve dispensers. And what dispensers are really good for is when you're ha you have a larger softening tank application, this disperses the water outward and evenly over that resin bed to help manage potential channeling issues. So we have one available for the 3900, 3150, and the 2900. And the 2900 is the same size, one for the 2850. And they are uh, appropriate for 36 inch tanks and above, use them. Some people use them on smaller tanks just to make sure that you have better diffusion. Um, but it's really absolutely, absolutely essential on 36 inch diameter tanks and larger because we need to get that flow spread laterally down through the unit. So that's the end of our, our presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to um, Pentair Technical Support or contact your local sales representative or myself. Thank you very much for attending. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We'll be happy to get back to you on this.